We are going to show you how to prepare histological tissue samples. That is, the steps involved for sample preparation to get you from a piece of tissue like this that comes in this pot, which has been sent by the clinicians from a patient, to a sustainable section. That is, to embed the tissue into paraffin blocks for histological sectioning afterwards and to study the microscopic anatomy of the tissues and cells to provide a final diagnosis. There are four steps common to nearly all histological procedures. First, fixation. Second, embedding. Third, sectioning. And fourth, staining. Fixation of tissue samples. What is fixation? Tissue fixation is a critical step that preserves cell and tissue components, maintains their structure, and therefore slows down tissue degradation during years. The two main mechanisms of fixation are cross-linking and coagulation. Cross-linking involves covalent bond formation both within proteins and between them, which causes tissue to stiffen and therefore resist degradation. Coagulation is caused by the dehydration of proteins by using alcohols or acetone, which deform protein structure so that water-fearing regions move the protein surface. Coagulative fixation can help embedding media, like paraffin wax, and penetrate tissue. One of the most commonly used fixatives is formalin, which is formaldehyde dissolved in a water. Other fixatives are used, such as Buon's liquid, which is of a yellowish colour and is a mix of components used to fix the DNA or the proteins. Sometimes the fixative needs to decalcify tissue, as in the case of bones. During fixation, formaldehyde attaches to primary amines to form a stable crosslink. This process is slow and can take up to one or two days, though on average 24 hours. Before continuing with the process of histological tissue sample preparation, we must address the process in tech secretariat. This point is very important. Case identification. First, for a proper case identification, it is essential to check the personal data. Second, the registration and finally the number of pathology, that is, the biopsy code. To this end, once we receive the samples in the pathology department, we must carefully verify specimen labelling and patient identification, that is, to check the patient data on the pot matches the fly request of the clinician who took the sample. In addition, some stickers are obtained with the biopsy code to stick them in the flyer request as well as on the pot. In this way, both the flyer request and the pot are clearly identified with the name and the patient number. Embedding. What is embedding? The embedding involves supporting specimens in media that have similar mechanical rigidity to the specimen itself. Choosing the right embedding medium is critical because if it is too stiff or too weak, defects may occur while sectioning. By far the most common media used for embedding is paraffin wax. The embedding process begins in the trimming or cut-up room by introducing the sample into the cassette prior to a gross examination of the tissue sample. This is done in the cutting hood that absorb noxious vapours of formaldehyde it is also here where a description of the macroscopic aspects of the sample are analysed, such as the number of fragments, size, colour and shape. Here we can see that the tissue fixed with formalin is hard and is composed of multiple fragments with a pearly white colour of about 2 to 2.5 centimetres. The cassettes have printed the biopsy code related to each patient. These cassettes have small grooves that allow the release of formalin and other solutions, but not the tissue. In case the samples are very small, some sponges are used to prevent losing the tissue. 
In order to see the tissue under the microscope, we need to cut it 3 to 4 microns in thickness. To be able to cut it so thinly, the tissue is embedded into paraffin. The problem is that paraffin is hydrophobic. That is, it does not merge well with water and fragments come in formalin, which is an aqueous solution, so we must remove the water from the tissue. Thus, prior to paraffin embedding, samples must be dehydrated by replacing water in the tissue with ethanol, first followed by xylin and then finally warmed paraffin wax. To do this, we use a tissue processing machine. Once blocks have been prepared, they are included in this machine where the tissue is processed overnight through different alcohols of increasing gradation and xylin to dehydrate the tissue, that is, to remove the water and finally replace it with paraffin. All these components are located inside the machine and automatically the blocks pass through different phases. After 16 hours approximately, the tissue blocks are obtained. We move to the next step. At the laboratory, the technicians take the blocks provided by the processing machine. Then, once the paraffin wax has infiltrated the sample, it is carefully positioned and surrounded with additional wax using a mould to form a block. Next, samples are attached to a tissue cassette. The cassette has the patient biopsy code. Afterwards, the mould is placed on a refrigerated surface or ice tray to facilitate the clamping of the tissue to its base. Once the wax has solidified, the tissue blocks may be gently removed from their moulds and prepared for sectioning. The third step is sectioning. Sectioning is the process of cutting thin slices of a sample from an embedding block. The sections are usually about 3 or 4 microns thick for use with a light microscope and sometimes go up to 10 microns. To cut sections, a metal glass or diamond blade is first secured on a microtome. The sample is then placed in a sample holder. Next, the sample is advanced to the cutting surface and drawn across the blade to create a slice at the desired thickness. Sections will amass as thin ribbons, which can be placed on a glass slide. Following sectioning, samples are placed on slides. For paraffin embedded samples, slices are first placed into a warmed water bath between 27 to 30 degrees Celsius and are then lifted out of the water onto the slide and allowed to dry. Biological tissue has very little inherent contrast, so after histology, slides are usually stained with dyes or antibodies to both increase the contrast of the tissue and highlight morphology or specific proteins. This allows us to distinguish some specific features of interest depending on the type of tissue and the stain used. There are many different histology stains in use, but all of them are aqueous solutions. Thus, prior to the staining, the sections must be free of wax to allow aqueous solutions to penetrate. This is done by putting the slides in the oven at 60 degrees Celsius to melt the paraffin. Then, slides should be hydrated by passing the slides through graded alcoholic solutions and clearing the tissue for 1 to 5 minutes in each. Now they are ready for staining. The most common stain performed is hematoxylin and eosin, or H and E. Hematoxylin stains the nuclei of cells blue, and eosin stains the cytoplasm pink, revealing cellular morphology of tissues. Because it is so common, there are automated machines like this to reproducibly stain numerous sections with H and E, as well as the previous steps of dewaxing paraffin sections and tissue hydration. The whole process takes about one and a half hours. Cover slipping, sealing and mounting. Before viewing the stained sections with a microscope, they are mounted on a clear glass slide and covered with a thin glass cover slip. The cover slip is often glued to the microscope slide in order to seal off the specimen from contamination and decay. A number of sealants are in use, including laboratory preparations 
or mounting medium, usually non-aqueous. However, to use a non-aqueous mountant, the section must be dehydrated again and cleared. Any water carried over to the mounting stage will show up as bubbles or vacuole-like structures, as the water droplets aggregate and distort the tissue. The mounting of specimens on the microscope slides is often critical for successful viewing. This is done automatically in this machine and takes about 30 minutes. Viewing with the microscope. After this, we have a stained histologic specimen sandwiched between a glass microscope slide and cover slip ready to be mounted on the stage of a microscope for inspection and diagnosis by the pathologist. Scanning. These slides can be digitized with digital pathology slide scanners. We can scan the whole slide and create the so-called whole slide image or select an area of interest with a set of focusing points. This can be done manually to a single slide or automatically to an entire carousel of up to 400 slides. This enables pathologists to diagnose from a computer screen. Digital pathology is currently one of the most promising avenues of diagnostic medicine in order to achieve even better, faster and cheaper diagnosis, prognosis and prediction of cancer and other important diseases. Immunohistochemistry. Sometimes immunohistochemistry or IHC techniques are needed. IHC refers to the process of detecting antigens like proteins in cells of a tissue section by exploiting the principle of antibodies binding specifically to antigens in tissues. IHC staining is widely used in the diagnosis of abnormal cells such as those found in cancerous tumours. Specific molecular markers are characteristic of particular cellular events such as proliferation or cell death. IHC is also used in basic research to understand the distribution and localization of biomarkers and differentially express proteins in different parts of a biological tissue. Here, for breast carcinoma, we usually do estrogen or progesterone receptors, as well as P53 and cytokeratins 19. All these stained samples may be also scanned and evaluated through the digital image from a computer screen. Histological tissue sample preparation from a small cylinder of tissues to its diagnosis.